Gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to um, University of Scranton Lady Royals basketball for the year 21. What year is this? 2021, I guess. I'm <laughs> lost in track of the year. And uh, this is just something we've been thinking about doing uh, for those out there in loyal Royal land, um, you know, just to get the season going and to get everybody excited. And it looks like we're all going to have a season, even though it's truncated. So we thought we'd do this and send it out to to the fans and so they, they know what's going on. So uh, first I want to thank Coach DePillo and, and Dean. Uh, those of you uh, who don't know, Dean and I are, we've been doing the radio together for 18 years. Um, Royal, uh, Dean uh, did the Lady Royals probably for 10 years by himself and then I've jumped on there because they're good. <laughs> and, and, and we all like to be associated with a winner. And uh, so Dean, thanks, thanks for coming and taking time from your real job. Coach DePillo, he doesn't have a real job. He's a basketball coach. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do today um, is uh, we just have some questions and uh, uh, talk a little bit about, about this. But before I, before I go, anybody want anything you want to say before I uh, go on and on and ask you questions? Anybody want to add anything? Oh, God, just glad we're, we're at this point. There were, uh, I'm sure, about well, November and December, you saw a, a lot of teams, especially in the in the uh, D3 realm kind of fall by the wayside. A lot of the New England schools and a lot of the New England conferences canceled really early and and January was a lot of unknown. Some were, some were not going to play. And so it had to be a little, and I'm sure Nick can, can talk to this a little bit as to almost a hurry up and wait come January, kind of what schools are going to do, what conferences are going to do. If, if the conference wasn't in, what's the school going to do? It seemed like there was a lot of, a lot of hands in the, in the cookie jar a little bit to see what, what was going to happen. But at least, uh, at least we're going to have some sort of form of, of Lady Royals basketball this year. Yeah, no, I mean, I think piggybacking off of that, you know, there's been so many rumors and so much speculation over the last few months about, seasons will look like this, this will look like that, what you can do, what you can't do. And, you know, it's, it's tough to keep your kids engaged. You know, it's tough to keep yourself engaged when, when you don't necessarily know what you're preparing for or, or when you're preparing for it. Um, and, and, you know, Dean, like you said, you know, a lot of schools, they decided to, you know, it was in their best interest not to participate in conferences and stuff. And, you know, that's where I just, you know, I think the leadership, you know, in, in our conference and, and, you know, obviously here at Scranton from Father Pilaris all the way down, um, you know, they saw the value in us playing, you know, for the student athlete experience, um, you know, and they, they went above and beyond to, to make this happen. Um, it would have been easy to pull the plug. You know, there's obviously a lot of commitment, time and financial that goes into, you know, making this happen for us. And, you know, I, I know I can speak for our kids when I say how, how appreciative we, have, we are of it. Um, you know, and we understand the responsibility that comes with it. Um, but, you know, from a basketball standpoint, we're really excited to get going. Thanks, Dean. And, that, and that's and very, uh, very smart of you to, to thank your bosses as we start. I think that's a very, <laughs> very savvy move. But I, before, I, before we actually get, get going with the questions, uh, you know, I, I did want to just think about, ask this so quickly. Um, how was your first year? I know this is your second year. This is a crazy year, right? But how would you sum up? Oh, people ask you, run into you at, at the summer, over the summer, or any of your buddies from um, the center of the universe in New Jersey, uh, and anybody you run into, and they say, so how was Scranton last year? What, what do you tell them? It was, it was an experience for sure. You know, you, you, you have, you know, the unknown coming into the year, right? The, the, the new team kind of getting used to me and me learning them and, you know, finding the mixture of setting the, the, the style of play that I want to play while still embracing what made them so successful prior to me getting here. So, you know, the beginning was a little bit of, um, you know, a feeling out process, you know, and I give the, the kids that we had, especially the four seniors who, who graduated, um, you know, a lot of credit for, um, you know, buying in, um, you know, being really receptive to, to new ideas and, and at times a, a drastically different style of play. Um, you know, I, I think as the season, as a non-conference wound down and we started to get into conference play, um, you know, we had to make some adjustments to ultimately find out what was going to work best for us to get through that year. And, and I think we went on a 10 or 11 game win streak, um, you know, down, down the stretch. Um, 
And I think that was us finding the happy medium for how we wanted to play. Now, you know, I don't think any team in the country, if, if you lose your last game, looks back and, and is satisfied with the, the way it ended. Um, you know, I know we weren't, but, you know, looking back on it and, and, and moving forward, um, you know, it, it, it was an experience, you know, and, and I'm happy that, you know, our seniors were able to win another landmark championship. Um, you know, and, and moving forward, I think we set the, we started to set the tone for what we'd like to do moving forward, um, you know, with this group that we have now. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more in a few, in a few minutes about what style you mean. You say, you know, we want to play the way a certain way. And, 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 and I, I can imagine that it was a little challenging that you had these type of players that played a certain style on, under Coach Woodruff, then uh, you want to play a style that's a little different, and they're not your players. So then sure. that's an adjustment, like you just said. And I thought you explained that well, so thank you. Okay, so, so moving along, we touched on this a little bit in our introduction here, um, and, and Dean touched on it, and then you uh, alliterated further, that, that it's been a challenge. You know, this COVID situation has been a challenge for all of us. So, so can you uh, expand a little bit more about, you know, what are the challenges that your team's faced, and, and, and you know, and how have you addressed those challenges? Yes, you know, for us, the, the biggest challenges came before we knew what our season was going to look like. So really the, the entire fall semester, you know, normally we would have started practice on October 15th. We would have had a conventional preseason. We would have had a couple scrimmages. Um, but, you know, the entire semester was really an unknown. Uh, we were fortunate to have, it was about four weeks of workouts and non-contact practices in the fall. Um, so where we were able to, to kind of, ingrain some of the things that we wanted to do this year, integrate, you know, our six newcomers. Um, but we're doing it without contact. And, and so it was a little bit limited what we could and couldn't do. Um, and then you had the time between when the, the fall semester ended and I guess it was the first week of January when we knew, when we kind of figured out what our season was going to look like. So for us, it was just a lot of Zoom meetings. Um, you know, we, we had a book club in the fall. Um, where, you know, each player presented different pieces and we talked about things kind of like a team building and feeling each other out and getting to know each other. You know, at that time, it really wasn't about basketball. It was really just about, um, you know, this new group finding their voice uh, and, and, and kind of getting comfortable with one another. Um, you know, once we got the okay to come back and practice, it's, you know, pretty much business as usual. Um, I think we're trying to cram a lot of things in a short amount of time. Um, cause there, there's a lot to teach in any given season, let alone when you lose four seniors who, who started and, and you, and you integrate six newcomers and, and you're expanding the roles of a lot of players who, who aren't used to those roles from last year. So, um, you know, I, I do wish we had the benefit of, um, you know, the normal October 15th start three to four weeks of practice, a couple of scrimmages. Um, but you know, fortunately everybody in the country is in the same boat, at least everybody in our conference is in the same boat. Uh, so, you know, it's, a, it's, just, it's really about us being efficient um, in, in what we do um, and, and, and just kind of going from there. Fortunately, the, the team has been, you know, phenomenal in, in, their, in their receptiveness and their willingness to learn and be open to things. Um, so it's, it's been, you know, even though there have been some challenges, um, I, I think this group is optimistic enough that we've tried to make the best of it. Thanks, Coach. And so considering you know all these challenges and and uh, and I gotta give you credit for all the different things you're trying to do just to keep them engaged but considering these challenges what do you, what do you think your team is right now uh, maybe give us a grade a b I'm sure you're not c but uh, you know what, what what would you you know what would you give the team grade wise and and why that grade yeah you know I, I think I mean I guess I'm probably gonna I'll give us a b right now because I think there's a lot of room for us to improve um but I love where we're at. I, I love, I love how hard we play first and foremost. Um, you know, I love our, our receptiveness to coaching. Um, you know, I, I love our attention to detail. Um, you know, I, I think the, the lack of obviously playing outside competition to this point, you know, leaves us a lot of room to really grow. And, and I think, you know, you'll see our best basketball come after we start to play other people and we can make adjustments and, and learn about ourselves. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of kids who are stepping into different roles than they had, you know, in the past. Um, and with that comes expectations and responsibilities. Um, and our kids understand that. And, and they've attacked that challenge, um, you know, really, really well. So, you know, 
I know we have a lot of room left to grow. Um, you know, where we're at, it's not a finished product, but, but I like where we are so far, you know, in this, you know, I think today was our I don't know, 15th, 14th practice since we've been back. So, um, you know, I, I think we're in a good place. Okay, Dean, what do you, what do you got to say, Dean? What were you got questions? Well, about that? well the, the, the first thing I, off the, off the top of my, my head was, was when this all kind of got shut down, the, the Royal season had just ended. Normally you're going into maybe recruiting mode. You got kids that you want to go see play. You got kids later in the year that, you need to come on, get them on campus. You've got recruiting is it, and that all gets shut down. And how do you keep in touch? Where's the, I mean, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of teams that have these, we're, are going to have these huge gaps in recruiting because of, of not being able to, Hey, there's, there was a junior that we needed to get on campus. Couldn't do it. There was some, I wanted to see them play. Couldn't see them play. They didn't have a game to, to say that might've been on the fence and that sort of thing. How did you guys try to, kind of keep in touch and still try to try to keep them engaged in, in coming to the University of Scranton or, or still am. Yeah, you know, you know, from a recruiting standpoint, we were fortunate to get a, a bulk of our 20, 2020 class, the, the kids who are freshmen now, we were fortunate to get most of them done during the season and even leading up to the season. So we were able to shift our attention to the 21 class relatively early and relatively quickly. Um, you know, so fortunately, a lot of the kids who were our targets, um, we have had, we were able to see a decent amount. Um, you know, once, I guess, June hit, um, you started seeing some AAU tournaments pop up. So we were able to get out and, and see kids who we weren't really comfortable with. Um, you know, and, and, and be, I think because of the early work that, you know, Caitlin and I were able to do, um, you know, we were able to lock in our 21 class, you know, pretty you know, I, I guess on time for what we would want to be. But if we didn't get that, if we didn't get our 20 class done when we did, I don't yeah. think we would be able to turn our attention to the 21s when we were able to. So fortunately, we're in a really good place right now. Um, you know, not having any seniors on this roster right now um, really narrowed the scope of, um, you know, who we were looking at and how many kids we were looking to bring in. Um, you know, having six kids in this year's class, if I had to do that during a pandemic year, I don't know if we would have been nearly <laughs> successful with that. Um, but fortunately, we were able to really narrow our focus and, and kind of narrow our targets we were looking for for you know next year's class. When you when you when you talk about it, that that class, you have you lost four seniors from last year. No seniors, you yeah. know, on on this team. Obviously, something as a as a leadership role or that sort of thing, you kind of hang your hat on your seniors. You kind of you go for them that's not there where's the you know the kind of that strength where's that you know hang your hat on either group of people or 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 people that that you're going to look towards that to maybe lean on that that are going to be younger you know um you kind of hit the nail on the head with that i, I think i think the lead, leadership the best lead, the best led teams always come from teams that have good leadership in their locker room and you know even though we have a lot of young kids and, and kids who are relatively inexperienced on the floor, you know, we're fortunate to have kids of really, really high character and, and a strong work ethic. Um, you know, for us off the bat, you know, Danielle uh, McCurdy and uh, Bridget Monahan, they're, they're going to step in as our captains this year. Um, and they've really led the way for us in everything we did in the off season um, through countless conversations with, with them two alone, one-on-one -on -one with the team. Um, they, they have our, our ideals for what this team and what our culture should look like are, are very strongly aligned. Um, so fortunately for us, um, you know, we have two built in leaders with them. And, and then with that being said, even the kids who aren't, you know, necessarily in that role, um, you know, they, they've really bought in, you know, both from last year when I had them and then the newcomers in the recruiting process, um, they, they know what, what the expectations are um, for us here in this program. You know, they know what our royal way looks like. They know what um, what it means to be bought in, you know, as far as our, our, our program goes. So um, I, I think people are still trying to organically figure out, you know, their roles and what, feel their voice out. Um, but, you know, I, I think we're, we're in a really good start, a really good place right now. And, and Bridget and Danielle um, leading the way, you know, definitely helps in that regard. Obviously, Bridget, you talked about Bridget and Danielle. You've got a couple others that played some significant minutes. I know uh, Harry's got some uh, 
some 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 highlights from from last year as well. Uh, trying to you know obviously lean on as well. That's going to see some some significant time. Obviously, you're going to be you know your depth is going to be going to be key and 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 like you said, kind of lean on some kids that are, are kind of have to you know maybe throw them into the fire a little bit here early at least. Yeah, no question. I mean, obviously, I, I you know talked about Danielle a little bit, and she's going to go from a, a reserve role. Um, to someone who I'm really relying on at, at one of those forward spots. Her growth from last year to this year has been exponential. Um, you know, we, we were very clear in it. And, you know, these kids, I took over last June, I guess it was, and we had conversations, but they really didn't understand me or my style and what my expectations were. So for a lot of these kids, this is really their first summer, their first off season um, to focus on the improvements that, that, that I was hoping for them to make within our style. Um, and, and I think Danielle really benefited, um, and she took our conversations to heart. Um, she's had an unbelievable last few weeks of practice. Uh, I'm excited for the opportunities that, that are in front for her. Um, and I, I think she's going she's gonna to take a, a huge step forward. Um, obviously, Kira Quigley, you know, she um, played, a, played a, a significant role for us last year. Um, fortunately, she was able to sit back and learn from two experienced front court players with Soph and Mason. Um, but statistically, you know, her numbers were, were really off the charts in, in limited minutes. Her efficiency numbers were phenomenal. Um, her shooting percentages or free throw, or, or, I'm sorry, her rebounding percentages, um, were really, really good, um, you know, with the minutes that she played. So I, I think she's prepared, you know, to take a big step forward. And, you know, and even another kid who played a decent amount for us last year, Emily Sharina, you know, started the season coming off the bench, um, found a starting role. Um, you know, got banged up a little bit and ended the season coming off the bench for us. You know, she's, she, she looks like a different kid. Um, her fitness level um, is really, really high. She can obviously shoot the ball well. We all know that. Um, but she's added a little, bit, a little bit more to her offensive game to where she's not going to be just a shooter. So, you know, I'm really excited for those guys, um, you know, to take big steps forward, um, you know, this year. And obviously with Bridget um, coming back, she, um, you know, was the one freshman – on the floor a lot with a group of experienced kids. And, and she, was, she was the one kid who was thrown to the wolves really, really early. And to see her maturation from a kid who, and we joke about it all the time, her first 10 games was running around, not knowing what was going on, to somebody who I just couldn't take off the floor the last 10 or 12 games of the season. Um, you know, seeing her maturation now, it's, uh, it, it's really remarkable only a year later. Well, that's that's a good segue. That when I'm gonna um, now put some videos up there, and you can you and Dean can chat a little bit while I'm trying to play techno master here. <laughs> and, and anybody who knows me knows my technological um, skills are limited, so we'll hopefully still uh, we'll still be online by the time I'm done. But so. Uh, and and so I I I but I, I think uh, it was good to know. You know, I think these four young ladies that you're talking about, we have a little clips for each of them, and I think you'll be able to see the people who are watching will be able to see why you're excited about these four yeah. you know and uh, i know i watched them each like 20 times dude i mean i was like i couldn't wait like, you know, <laughs> you know I, and we made the joke before we got on i mean you know um i can handle demise disease and death but i can't help but handle no basketball i mean <laughs> we, we need basketball and uh, and so um uh, in spite of me sound like dick vital I'll, I'll now uh <laughs> share my screen i, I i'm Dick is over the hill, though. It's time for him to retire, but we won't get into that. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the first is, uh, let's see, I, I, I'm going to start it, then I'm going to take the sound off so uh, you guys can chat, okay? I'm impressed that you got this up and running the first yeah, time. No. It was good, yeah. It's proof that there's a God. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, so obviously, you know, these are some of the things that we're looking for out of Danielle. Just, you know, she's uniquely athletic and explosive. Um, you know, at the forward position. Um, she's, and she's taken that and she's much more mindful of, of what she does now. So I think, you know, playing the expanded role, knowing she's going to be relied on for significant minutes, um, you know, she won't have to constantly be looking over her shoulder, um, you know, wondering when she's coming out. Like she's, she's earned her role uh, based off of her work and her production. And, and, and I think you're going to see a lot more of that stuff for her. Uh, out of her moving forward. Had, and it had to be great to to have her work under somebody like a Mackenzie Mason and Sophia Recupero. I mean, if you had to 
if you had to be behind a couple of, of folks to kind of learn and and that sort of thing, those are or those are pretty good ones to learn behind. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, those two definitely left um, a huge void. Um, and, and I don't know if any one or two people can just step in and replace it and do what those guys did. Um, but, you know, I know Dan, led by Danielle and Kira and, and the young kids that we have behind them, um, you know, they're going to give it a go. And, and, and I think they're going to be, I know they're excited and I think they're going to be prepared and, and they're, they're going to be themselves. You know, I don't expect them to come in and be Mason So, um, but they're going to be the best version of, of each of them that they can be. And, and you know, I, I think as long as we, we keep our eye on, on what's ahead of us and just worry about getting better, you know, one day at a time, I think that, you know, they'll, they'll carve out their own niche and, and, and they'll be, you know, really good because of that. Okay, next is uh, Sharina. You can see her getting wide open here. And Go ahead. Yeah, you know, she, she obviously had a, had a terrific year shooting a basketball. Um, you know, she's... She's a, she's a matchup nightmare because we were able to shift her between the two, the three, and the four, um, you know, w w which made her a little bit difficult to guard. And we're going to use her in that way this year. You know, we'll have some lineups where we go, you know, conventional. We'll play small a little bit. Um, but, you know, obviously she could shoot it from, you know, as soon as she walks into the gym. And, and that just allows us to have, you know, a really, really good spacing, you know, on, on the floor. And, you know, it, it, that's really important the way we play. Yeah, what do you try to do with some, I mean, we've seen, we've seen Emily just come in the building and just like, she makes one, she makes the first one and yeah. they, they come in bunches. And so you, obviously the, you know, the scouting report is going to be out on her. Hey, you got to run at her, you got to get her off the line. You got to shoot, you know, just a catch and shoot. Now you got to try to expand her game a little bit to, to try to, to try to throw some, a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah, you know, it, it's there's, there's really a couple things with that. You know, it's funny. She made 61 threes and she missed a couple games for us this year. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, and it's really kind of threefold. You know, one, the first thing is back up until they don't guard you and then shoot it from there. And <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, she has the range to do that. Um, you know, the second thing, and you kind of mentioned it, you know, the expansion of your game. And she's she's gotten a lot better off the dribble, you know, whether it's the one or two dribble pull up or or just the ability and the strength and the confidence to finish in the lane, um, different ways to get there. And third, which is kind of the most important thing, um, is us playing faster than, than we played a year ago. Um, you know, the, the best way to get an open shot is to get down the floor before the defense is set. And, and our kids really understand that. Um, we'll, we'll, we're going to press a lot more this year, uh, mixing up different presses than we did a year ago in, in hopes of speeding the game up and playing in transition more and allowing our kids – you know, to use their natural abilities and, and find each other and play off of each other. So, you know, those are really the three things that, that I think will help um, allow SHU to, to continue to grow within what we're doing. Okay, next, I think we have Miss Monahan. Here we go. Yeah, Bridge is um, the evolution of, of her freshman year. You know, if you watched <laughs> it, you picked out a game from the first, you know, whatever, a month, month and a half of the season, then you – then you look toward, you know, this is obviously the NCAA tournament game. You know, it looks like two different kids. Um, you know, she really started to attack with a purpose, um, you know, a, a, as the season went on. And, you know, she was, you know, finished the season shooting 44% from, from, from the field, 37 from three and 85 from the line. You know, if you back that up five games ago, she was one of the only kids in all of Division three to be over 50 from the field, 40 from the three-point line and, and 90 from the line. Um, and, and I think, you know, teams started keying in on her more. And that's just a credit to her work ethic and, and how hard she worked and, and how much she wants to um, – how much she wants to affect winning. Um, so, you know, whatever her numbers end up looking like this year, um, her effect on our success is, is going to go well beyond that number. Um, first one in the gym, last one to leave. You know, that, that type of thing is, is infectious, you know, with everything we do. Great. Okay, let's see. I think next is, um, let's see if I can, oh, here you go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Kira, Kira is just, you know, she, she's a low maintenance, hardworking, physically imposing kid. And which is, which is hilarious because she's the sweetest, most soft spoken kid off the floor. Um, but you know, she shot 55% from the field, um, you know, made a handful of threes, um, rebounded the ball, especially, you know, on the offensive end of the floor at, at a really, really high rate. Um, and, and she's a kid who, similar to Bridget, 
really had no idea what was going on until halfway through the season. And, and I think that's where you saw her just take off. And, you know, for a kid who, you know, for, for a relatively big, strong kid, she runs the floor so well. And she's able to catch it, be composed, um, and, and just keep the game really, really simple. Um, you know, I'm excited for, for what she's going to bring to us this year. Um, you know, her simplicity and her toughness um, is going to be a really good complement to, to everything we do, you know, with everybody else. So I just played this whole thing there, but now we got Kira again, I think, right about here. You can see the last the post moves are just very fundamental, good feet. Yeah, hard, you know, definitely a hard worker, you know, definitely a hard worker, um, keeps things really, really simple. Um, I still bridge it. I'm sorry. Really so, well still bridge Monahan for one more clip. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then we'll go back here. Yeah, she again. shot the ball really well for us, um, you know, in, in the fall and then even at the start of practice. So, you know, you talk about people adding, th adding different things to their games. You know, she's not just going to be a on the block, you know, rim running kid. You know, she's, she's eventually going to have to be a 15, 18 foot and, and out past three sh consistent shooter. Um, and and she's, she's worked really hard to add that to her game. Here's the last clip here, and then we'll go back to our question. There she is again on the low post, knocking the girl into the third row. We love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Stop this share. Okay. We're back live. All right. So um, so you touched a little bit on, about, about your style of play, and it's clear anybody who, who saw the Lady Royals two years ago and on their, you know, venture to the Final Four, uh, and C Coach Woodruff, you know, he built his team around this, precision half court offense that would just, you know, slice people up and they would get what they want. It was just phenomenal. And then they just, you know, guarded people. They had those, 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 uh, those hooligans that would just take your lunch and step on you. It was great. I, I, I we just loved them. But, um, but this year is it's different. And last year, you know, you made that transition as we, as we spoke briefly to a different type of style. So just again, just talk a little bit more about your style. Uh, and, and I just have to commend you. It, it's, it's basketball in 2020, you know? And, and I think this is what people who watch basketball and have studied the history of basketball, like crazy people like me and Dean, you know, and he, he's gonna make some joke about it, my ABA references, I'm sure. But you know, if you look at basketball over 50 years, it's evolved. It's not the same game that I played and I'm a lot older than you two characters. And, uh, and so tell us a little bit about how that style, how, how basketball has changed more broadly and, and how you're going to do it, please. Yeah, you, you know, there, listen, there's a lot of ways to win and a lot of ways to be successful. Um, you know, I've been fortunate that at the different places I've been to, to have coached under different styles and, you know, kind of figured out, you know, how I want to play when, when we could find, when I could finally run my own program. Um, you know, for, for us, you know, especially this year, the emphasis is going to be on the speed that we play at. Um, you know, we're going to press for 40 minutes, um, you know, whether it's run and jump or, or zone presses or just a straight man press, um, you know, and we're going to let our defense kind of fuel what we want to do offensively. Um, you know, we, we were kind of joking today in practice, you know, one of the kids said to a coach, why, why haven't we really practiced too much with the shot clock yet? I said, well, guys, the shot clock's not going to be a factor. We're going to get shots off well before, you know, we start getting 10, 9, 8, 7, you know, on the clock. Um, you know, and, and for us, you know, obviously we, we put an emphasis on shooting in the recruiting process. Um, you know, we want to get early shots as, as often as we can. Um, you know, we think we can be a really strong offensive execution team really, really fast and really, really early in the shot clock. Um, there will be times where we have to be successful in executing and, and draining clock and being good in special situations. Um, and, and we will be, and, and, we'll, and we continue to work at that. Um, but we want to get up and down the floor as much as we can. You know, it's it, one, it allows us to play um, a lot of kids. Um, you know, we, I know we've talked about, you know, the four kids, um, but, but we have, you know, six newcomers on this roster. Um, we have other returners who didn't, may not have seen a, a ton of minutes last year, but are going to step into larger roles this year. Um, and, and we want to give these kids an opportunity to use their natural abilities, um, you know, to be successful, um, to, to help each other, to, to share the ball, to move the basketball. Um, you know, last year, obviously, in the, with a huge emphasis on the three-point shot, like I mentioned, I mean, last year, we set the school record for three-pointers made and attempted in the season. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and as we go on and play, start to play full seasons, hopefully after this year, you know, we'll continue to, to, to up that number a little bit. Um, but, you know, for us, you know, it's fun. It, it's a way to share the ball, you know, way to play more kids. Um, and it, like I said, it's a very appealing in the recruiting process. And, and, and hopefully, 
know, the people who are tuning in and watching, they, they, they enjoy it as well. So, you know, those are all things that are really important to us. <laughs> people, most people might want me muted, but um, <laughs> so uh, what, what, what's the biggest concerns you have? Uh, you know, what keeps you up at night? You know, I mean, I remember back in the day, you know, you, you don't sleep, you know, sometimes coaches, uh, you want to, you know, and sometimes you help, you do things to help you sleep, but uh, it doesn't always work. So what, what keeps you up at night? You know, it's funny from, from the day our schedule came out and, and, and we started the process of preparation. Um, my, my, my hours of sleep have gone down significantly. You know, I think with this year, it's really the unknown. You know, there's so much unknown to, to this year, um, you know, on the court because, you know, we lost four starters, you know, and, and, and you're having kids step into to new roles. Um, you know, we're going to have freshmen, you know, either starting or playing significant minutes for this year where, you know, we had one or, or two last year. Well, you're going to have a bunch this year and you're going to have, you know, new starting fives and rotations might change based on, you know, who's playing well at a given time and who's separating themselves in practice. Um, you know, so for us, it's the unknown um, off the court. You know, there's just so much going on, you know, in this world, you know, with the pandemic and, and you know, obviously we're testing three times a week and you, you don't know, you know, what's coming down the pike. You know, you've seen all these different cancellations and postponements and things of that nature. So, you know, the unknown is, is probably the biggest thing that, that worries any, any coach. Um, you know, as far as, you know, once we throw the ball up in a couple of weeks against Moravian for the first time, um, you know, that part I'm excited about. I think it's just the unknown leading up to, leading up to the first game day. So, you know, Probably that. Thanks. Go ahead, Dean. I know you have a, another question for him. Uh, just, well, just the one I was I was thinking of. We we always talk about when you get into these preseason, you know, beginning of the season, you know, you get that hey, it's a marathon, not a sprint. There's 20 games. There's 25 games or whatever. You have eight. Yeah. You have eight games. Yeah. That's all you got. And yeah. so game yeah. one, I mean, you got to come out firing right out right out of the shoot. I mean, there's really you. I mean, does that can't change your coaching style any is it prep or anything that knowing that you have such few opportunities this year you know it 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 doesn't change our the style because you know I said it last year and, and I've said it this year as well you know our job as, as a coaching staff and as a team is just to improve a little bit every day you know be better today than we were yesterday um, you know unfortunately you know we only have eight games plus whatever we get in the postseason hopefully as opposed to the normal 25 plus year postseason. Um, so, you know, the growth, I think for us, um, because we're so young, isn't a come at, at, at a much higher and a faster rate. Um, you know, unfortunately we don't have the 25 games to do it, but you know, that's okay. You know, the, the other, the other four schools in a the landmark, they're, they're in the same boat as us. Um, so, you know, that's probably, I guess if there is a frustrating part, you know, it's that um, because I, I know the growth of this team is going to be is going to be really exponential once we get started. I think you're going to watch, you know, our first game versus Moravian and our last game versus whoever we played against, you know. And and, and I I'd like to think that you're going to see, you know, a completely different team. Um, you know, we have a lot of kids who who are going to figure out, you know, their roles and and listen, rotations and roles and starting lineups and who's playing and who's not playing. It's probably going to change a lot throughout the year, and and, and that's okay. Um, you know, we have you know returners, obviously, you know, Carly Heineman and Kayla, you know, they're they're playing phenomenal. You know, they're playing, they're playing really, really well. And, and those guys are going to get asked to step in. They're going to step into roles that they may not have seen last year. And, and the other sophomores on our roster, you know, whether it's Hannah and Sarah Walsh, I mean, they're, they're playing phenomenally right now for us, you know, so they're going to step into roles that they didn't necessarily see as a freshman consistently, you know, and then we have six newcomers on the roster. And at some point this season, they're all going to play, you know, maybe not the same game, but they're all going to have opportunities. And, and, and I think you're going to see, um, they're all really talented and they all bring something different to the table. So, you know, I, I think as we go through the year, you know, I wish I could close my eyes and see what we look like, you know, 30 days from now, but, you know, part of the beauty of the process is just staying in the moment and, and just trying to get better. We talked about that in practice today, um, you know, and, and we'll continue to do so, you know, just, just the focus on the improvement, focus on getting our 1% better and, and, and seeing where it takes us. And just finally, on, on my end, we, we've talked about the senior. It's, it's always at the beginning of the year, it's what you've lost. 
It's it's what you don't have is what you don't have. What do you what do you do have? You're six. You've got you know you said you have six freshmen coming in. Here's some some of the newcomers, some of the ones that will, like you said, we'll probably see all six at one point or another during the course of these eight games. Talk talk about your freshmen. Talk about your new your new kids. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm go down a list. <laughs> I got them on the board there. So it's easy to go down a list. So you know Ali Lynch, um, you know really tough point guard from the Philly area. Um, you know can defend 94 feet. Um, relentless kid on on both ends of the floor. Doesn't get tired. Um, can knock down can knock down to open three. Um, does a really good job. She's probably the one kid who's like a true point guard on our roster who can find the balance between finding her own offense and setting the table for everybody else. Um, Maddie Hartnett, um, North Jersey kid. Um, she's going to be special. You know, she, 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 she can, she can score it. She can play the one, the two, the three nonstop energy um, can defend the one, two or the three. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for her. I, I think she's going to have a, a terrific freshman year and a great career. Um, Leah Nolan, another Jersey kid. Um, from from down in Homedale, just physically tough, um, great size for her position, um, shoots it great, and, and I saw her a ton in high school, and so much of a better shooter than I even realized she was. Um, she's just an, an unbelievably hard worker. Uh, Jenna Larrabee, a forward from from Syracuse, um, long, um, runs the floor phenomenally well. Um, scores it in different ways, phenomenal basketball IQ. Um, you know, she, she's a kid who, who, who I can see really carving out a, a nice role for us as the season goes. Um, Mackenzie Steele, kind of a local, a local kid from this area. Um, you know, a, a big body who runs the floor, great screener, um, probably the closest thing to a conventional big that we have, but her game's not really limited to there. Um, you know, so quiet, hardworking kid. Um, you know, kind of do whatever you ask, um, you know, smiles a lot, but we'll, we'll, we'll pop you in the jaw, you know, on the same possession. Um, and, and then Maddie Ryan, um, you know, kid who we got late. Um, her mom, Rose, actually played at, at Scranton. Um, she's, she's probably one of the best rebounders I've ever seen. Um, just her, her nose for the ball and reading it off the rim and her relentlessness and going to get it, um, that alone is going to find her minutes. Um, in, in what we do. So, um, you know, really excited about the, this freshman group. Um, and, and on top of that, they're, they're phenomenal kids and, and they come from phenomenal families. And, and, and those are things that we really talked about um, through the recruiting process. You know, it, it takes all of five minutes watching a kid to figure out if they play, if they can play or not. Um, it takes a while to get to know them, figure out what makes them tick, um, to learn about their families, because you're bringing them in, in, into, into our family as well. Um, these kids checked all those boxes and then some, um, you know, they're like any freshman, they're going to have their ups and downs, um, but they're, they're going to, they're going to smile. They're going to work hard and, and they're going to represent the university well throughout the entire process. Thanks coach. Yeah. So we only have around four minutes left because I don't, I, I know you're busy and uh, I promised an hour out of you and I don't want to take any more time than that. Plus I think there's some um, attention deficit disorder on my part. So um <laughs> But uh, and, and a couple quick things. Number one, who's going to be tough in the league, all right? And then second of all, is there anything we forgot to talk about that, that you'd like to share with the with with your fans out there? Because uh, before you know, it, we're going to be going. No, I, well, first of all, you know, I, I appreciate. It. I've gotten emails and, and stuff from from fans and supporters. Obviously, us not having fans, you know, this year, um, just you know, extending their well wishes and, and offering us support. Um, you know, which is great. You know, we, we, we're really unique in, in, in our conference and in this area that our fan base is phenomenal. You know, I think the one, kid, we want, the one thing our kids will really miss, you know, among others this year is having an opportunity to play in front of um, a big, rabid, loyal fan base, you know, that, that we have. And, you know, the, the, the kids who were here last year, um, you know, they, they really got to see it firsthand, especially in, in, in the landmark tournament, the NCAA tournament you know, how, how, how great our fans really are. Um, you know, as far as the league goes, listen, when, when you lose four kids that like you had last year, everybody's tough. You never want to overlook anybody. Um, but, you know, Catholic is always going to be really, really good. Moravian and Juniata, you know, they, they pose the, their own threats because of the thing, the people they have returning and, and the things that they historically do well. 
Um, I think Drew's going to be terrific. You know, they're one team that didn't lose one player off of last year's roster who played consistent minutes. They're really well coached. Um, they're big. They're tough. They're physical. Um, you know, I, I think they're going to be they're going to be really really good this year. Um, you know, but you know, for us, it's and I said it last year, and I'll, I'll say it for as long as I'm the coach here. You know, it's always going to be about us and, and what we do and our, our level of preparation. Um, if we do what we need to do, I like our odds against anybody. Um, you know, if, if we shortchange things, if we cut corners through the process, then, you know, you can get beat on any night. And, and I think that, that goes for any team, you know, in our conference and any team in the country, honestly. Um, but, you know, our, our league is, you know, our league's going to be really good, you know, with, with the teams that are participating this year. Um, you know, and we're excited to get going. You know, I, you know, February 9th, whatever it is, you know, can't get here quick enough. You know, it's by the time we, by the time we actually do tip off, it's going to be 300 and, 30 something days, you know, since we had our last game. So, you know, I know I'm excited. I know our kids are really itching to, to kind of get back and get going. And, um, you know, the support from our fans and our alumni and, 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 and everybody else, you know, it, it's really, really appreciated. And it's not lost on, on me or, or our team. Well, coach, I appreciate that. I know I'll have to listen to you. I'm ready to get the charge. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So, Dean, I'll let you have the last word, and then I'm going to play with the uh, stop the recording when Dean's done. Again, thanks again, Coach, and uh, and, and I'll, I'm sure I'll be seeing you uh, on, on campus. No, thank you guys for doing this. Uh, Dean, take us home. Well, that, thank you again to Coach DePillo for helping, uh, giving, lending us his time there. Stick to with, with a lot of the social media. Uh, that'll give you a bunch of different ways. We're going to be on regular celestial radio. We're going to be online. We're streaming all our, our game, all the games. Uh, as well. So uh, our, our uh, folks on uh, our sports information department, John and, and uh, the Johns there in the, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, a lot of the, the links and everything. So anybody can in any way, shape or form, try to, uh, to, to try to watch, listen and, and get uh, Lady Royals basketball since uh, uh, nobody can be at the long center. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll see you in, in a couple of weeks and good luck coach.